other one was doing extremely well. And what did he do? Didn't order enough, ran out of inventory, and now it's down the tank again. Two things, capitalization, knowing those costs, those unit costs that you were talking about and making sure it's clearly defined. And then what you're talking about here, kill, literally, get rid of the non-performers. Okay, we're live, and my name's Norm Ferrar, aka the Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing something really unique, and that's holistic optimization, a new way of optimizing your Amazon listing. We're also going to be talking about the formulation of optimizing uh, your optimization strategy, understanding the unit economics, and what does it mean to optimize holistically. All right, you've tuned in the holiday edition of Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Okay, today, as discussed, we're going to be talking about holistic optimization, a new way to optimize your Amazon uh, brand. Our guest today is CEO and founder of Feedvisor. Uh, before starting Feedvisor, he was one of the founders uh, of an innovation, uh, innovative social media uh, platform and senior R&D manager over at Sun Microsystems. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and is an, it has an executive MBA from Kellogg Northwestern. And I'm talking about first-time guest Victor Rosenman. So we'll get to Victor in a second, uh, but first a word from our sponsor. I want to thank Jeff Schick Legal for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? How does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J-E-F-F-S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome, Victor. Nice to meet everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you. And, and sorry for the long ramble, uh, you know, at the beginning of the podcast, but that's what happened when people are live. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me here. Oh, it's our pleasure. So this is a really interesting topic, and I don't know. I've got a frog in my throat, of course. It's what happens when you're live. But uh, anyways, this is, a this is a really great topic. As um, soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, okay, let's, let's hear about this. Because being able to optimize your, your listings holistically and build a brand kind of caught my attention. I'd like to see what you're going to be talking about. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? Maybe uh, it's a good opportunity to, to say a few words of, sure. uh, about Feedvisor and, and myself. So uh, I basically founded Feedvisor about eight years ago. So it's been a long road, uh, very interesting road, very exciting road, but it's a long road. Um, when I started Feedvisor, uh, our mission was to, to really help uh, Amazon sellers uh, from small and medium sellers to brands to kind of large, very large kind of retailers and resellers to help them be successful on Amazon through the means of technology, through the means of AI, through the means of data analysis, because it was clear that even at that time, it was completely obvious now that the way Amazon moves forward, the speed increases every time, uh, almost every day you need to be faster and you need to be more precise. And that puts a lot of uh, strain on basically on everyone, right? Because how can you as a human 
be fast and be precise at the same time and how you can uh, outcompete pretty much everyone else. And this is where the technology comes into play. This is where AI comes into play. You mentioned it, uh, chat GPT today. It's, you see how the world is changing, right? So everything is, uh, everything is moving from, you know, the old way of doing things where, you know, people were sitting with their notebook, taking notes, calculating uh, on their calculators or whatever it is. And now it's all being handled by the computer. So where are we humans, where we add value? We add value through strategy. We add value through uh, kind of combining basically all the immediate actions with what you have behind the scenes, how your logistics is working. What's your lead times? How much inventory do you have? Like you have a lot of information that you know. Computer doesn't. Computer knows what's going in the market. Computer knows to react. Computer knows a lot of things, but it needs guidance and it needs strategy. And it comes from the human. So that match of human plus machine is the winning strategy basically today. And, uh, and what we're going to talk today about the holistic optimization is how you really tie everything together. Various optimization types. You tie um, the various inputs you have. You, you tie your knowledge. And then boom, you perform. And this is what the reason why today, uh, I don't know how many of you or your listeners know uh, what FitAdvisor is doing today, but we are used by the largest sellers on Amazon. So if you take top 100 sellers on Amazon, 20 of them are using FitAdvisor today. And they, they managing businesses of hundreds of millions a year. And this is because it's so crucial to be fast, to respond, and combine your strategy with the strategy of the computer. And then suddenly, boom, you have the, the perfect combination here and it will drive the success. So, uh, so I really hope to, to share some thoughts that could be interesting to, to your audience and uh, we're looking forward to building relationships. Yeah, I, I'm very interested in, in what you're gonna be saying about this. And you know, one of the first things that comes to mind are the the steps and i do know that you have slides by the way so we will get to them and if i'm talking ahead of myself which i usually do just let me know because i know that you've prepared some slides but one of the things i'm very interested in is how do you put it together like are there some action steps that you can provide yeah that's that's a great, great question. So the, the slides that I brought together are more like visualizations for, because, you know, when you're getting into data, et cetera, things tend to be, tend to be abstract. So, so that's, that's why, why I, I try to put it on paper. You cannot put AI on paper, but, but you can put the outputs, you can put kind of data and then it gives you a better idea. Um, how we turn it into, into actions is, you you basically um, you basically tell the machine what you want to achieve, what's your strategy, where you want to be, and and then you you define it, configure you configure the system to tell basically that's where I want to be, and then it takes the actions on, on its own. And you can you can review, you can analyze, you can tune, uh, but this is it's sort of a partnership, right? partnership between the human intelligence and artificial intelligence. And this is how it all works together. Okay. So uh, uh, again, trying to break it down because you're talking about something that's fairly abstract. Uh, and by the way, uh, your company way before chat GPT is probably using some form of artificial intelligence. Is that correct? Yeah. So artificial intelligence is exceptionally broad field. Right. Um, we the the type of artificial intelligence we use is the one that learns the market. So so we understand the difference in pricing. We understand how uh, difference in promotion, advertising, etc. And then we help our customers to basically act through the AI. So it's not the AI that builds the stories. It, it's it's a different type of AI. It's AI that is capable to look at a lot of data identify trend and see if everyone is going to that point, maybe I have some other way to get there faster. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. And I guess the, the next question I would have is 
about the formulation. So how, yeah, how do you formulate the optimization strategy that you're using? So, so in order to really formulate the strategy, uh, you typically start with understanding your unit economics, right? So that this kind of the very basic of the basic that you need to start. And the reason for that, and it doesn't matter if you have like huge multi-million dollar business or you have a smaller business, you have to be exceptionally clear uh, on uh, understanding your unit economics. So you know what? That's maybe a good uh, reason to go and share with you something small. Sure. So let me do a quick... Uh, okay, yeah, it's it shared. Screen. Perfect. So, so as I said, everything here is about the illustration. It's not the slides per se. Um, what is really unit economics? Unit economics is what are your costs to to basically deliver the product or cost of goods sold, right? So, so it, it's usually your product cost um, and the cost that it comes you to get this product to Amazon. So, so you have this original cost. Then the second type of cost you typically um, incur is, is the cost that Amazon charges you. And this is, comes in, in forms of the various shipping and handling and the referral fees and all of this, and the various fees of fulfillment, FBA fees, that basically Amazon charges you. And that's, you know, it's almost like tax. There, there's no way around it. You, you're going to pay it. So, so these are the costs that are given. When you come in to deal with Amazon, when you come in to do business on Amazon, that's given. This is where you start. You have your product costs. It is what it is. And you have your Amazon costs. It is what it is. You have a tax, but it comes later. Right? So, uh, so with, with the, these are the costs that are given. There are two more costs that are exceptionally important and that influence your business uh, to, to a very large degree. The cost of return, we call it the hidden tax, right? Because sometimes we will deal with customers and they say, oh my God, the business is beautiful. This is the margin. This is how we're doing. But guess what? Uh, every fifth product is being returned. Mm. So now let's recalculate this. And this is skew by skew basis, right? Now let's recalculate and see how much do you see at the end? What's your margin? It may be very different. So it... It, it may feel very nice to look at the top line, but it's really important for you to know your bottom line. So that's one cost that is hidden cost, but very, very important. The second cost, equally as important in your control entirely, this is the cost of advertising and promotion, right? <coughs> so, so when you have a cost of advertising, you can put more, you can put less, you can look at a skew by skew level, you can look at this brand by brand level, but at the end, this is the cost you control. It obviously drives the sales, but this eats out of the overall margin. So, so when you add all these costs together, you have what we call in Feedmice operating profit. So this is your sales minus all the costs, the obvious ones and the hidden ones. And then you have the operating profit. And if you divide this operating profit by sales, you get figure which... Uh, because like a compass, this is your operating margin. And when people say, how much should I advertise on this product? How much should I spend? Should I run a promotion? What should I do? Should I lower the price operating margin? This is where you're looking at, and this is so, so crucial. And every, uh, every large customer, but I would say every mid-sized seller on Amazon and even a smaller one, they have to be, they have to be like, crazy about this operating margin because operating margin is what defines will you be successful or you will grow more to, to just burn more so that's that's kind of what it comes to the unit economics and then from unit economics when you understand where you stand you, you know the the joke when people come and say you know what H how i can uh improve my my profits when i'm losing in every sale like sell more right <laughs> That's, that's not what you want to do. So in order to not be in that situation, you need to understand that you're profitable at every sale or at least unless you're liquidating, right? But but in normal way, when, you, when you're selling and you're growing your business, you need to be profitable at every sale and then you can grow your sales. You grow your sales by creating more advertising, but creating more advantageous pricing, great. 
but you need to understand this unit economics. So when you define the strategy, and we'll talk about this in a second, but when you define the strategy, first understand that you're making money on every transaction and why you're making money on every transaction is what comes into it. So that's, that's what I call because the basic, basic, basic understanding of your business. In my opinion, every seller who doesn't know that need to stop, do this recalculation and then move forward. You will save tons and tons of money. And this is what makes people successful. Yes. And you know, one of the things that when you're just coming back, we talk about this. So understanding these unit economics, it actually came up last week in our podcast and just understanding every touch point that you're spending money on. So these might be little things. So for me, it could be soap. It is the packaging, the insert. We might have a little transparent seal that uh, goes on the soap so, you know, that we can show that it hasn't been open. They're half a penny. But all of these things, including if you're bringing it in from another country, it could be your tef- tariff codes. Um, all of these things come into play. And especially when you take a look at your Amazon reports, you have to make sure that we try to, I've got a bookkeeper that calculates everything. So we, we bring it down to minute detail, including uh, if there's products, and this is a killer for a lot of people right now, long-term storage fees. So you oh, might have. We're going products. to talk about this. Okay. We're going to talk about it. All right. So we'll, we'll wait to talk about that, but um, like your slow moving products, it, it, it could be killing everything you might have. And you're so right, Victor. Oh, top line. I did seven figures, but you lost a hundred grand. You know, it, who cares about top line? Who cares? And um, you've got to really start to understand that bottom line. And what you talked about here uh, really does help out. So I'm not sure if you want to get into the, the next slide or into the strategy. Um, yeah, let, let's talk about let's talk about the strategies. Okay. Um, so let me see how I get this to proceed. So, so this is what I spoke about, the impact of returns. Again, for people who cannot really see, that shows you the return rate over time. Um, and then let's really get into the optimization strategy. So, right. so the optimization strategy, it's, uh, you know, I, I said everything is visualization. This is not the presentation, but this is the visualization. And the most impactful and powerful way for you to define your strategy for the optimization into is to understand the performance of your items so how you understand performance in, in a very black and white way right so the way we do it is we we basically think about this you can plot all your products into a graph where you have one axis this is your profit margin or operating margin even better and then the other one are sales. And then, you know, you get a scatter plot. Every point represent product. And in some products you would see are selling a lot and having a lot of profit. This is your winners. And some products are selling a lot, but they do very little profit. As you mentioned, Norm. These are not necessarily your winners. And some do not sell at all and they have low profit, but some do not sell, but they have a huge profit margin. So, so when you have those and you look and say, okay, so what my strategy, I mean, strategy is always concrete. It's always action. Well, what I'm going to do. So I have product like this, amazing product. What should I do? I should advertise it like crazy. I should push it. I can lower the price. I have huge amount of margin to give. And I'm not making a lot because I'm not selling enough. So those that sit here in this quadrant, and again, for those who don't see uh, the graph, this would be the products that have high margin and they have low sales. These products you want to invest in. You want to put more advertising, you want to put, uh, you potentially can run promotions. You can be aggressive on price. If you, if you have a buy box competition, you want to win the buy box. 
you don't want to give a shit about the competition, right? That's, that's your winners. This is where you focus. This is what you do. Now we have exact opposite. We have products that sit below, in this case, below zero, but they sit below the desired margin. They sit low on the graph. So, so these are the products. Some of them sell well. Some of them are not selling well. They do not have good margin. These are the products you should think not twice, 100 times before you advertise them, right? Because this is the easiest way. Advertising adds cost. Always adds cost. This is how it is. It, you will realize some of these costs in additional sales. But are these really the products you want additional sales for? Because you don't making a lot of them, a lot of money home from them. It's so, so for these products that don't have high margin, you want to be much more careful. And again, you need to factor in returns. Maybe some of these good margin products are not because you, you didn't factor the return. So you look at the operating margin. But assuming everything is great and you do have product with a high margin, these are the ones you want to advertise. And the product with low operating margin, you want to kind of slow down and really see, do you want to sell that many? Because you can be running in a rat race, right? <laughs> you're working hard, you're bringing this product, you're doing all the work, the money goes through, you look at the end, you made five bucks. So <laughs> this, is, this is not what you work for. So, so this, is, this is the core, the very core of the strategy. It's simple. It doesn't require a PhD. It's simple. You want to promote and push the products you have higher margin on, and you want to be very careful with the products you have low margin. But unit economics, you need to be very clear about this. A mistake in unit economics means lost opportunity here. You will do the wrong thing. Once you define that strategy, the AI can implement. They can set prices. They can set bids. They can do everything. But you are the one who is in the driving seat. It's like you're flying the airplane, right? So don't push the wrong buttons. You definitely not push the wrong buttons. <laughs> you know, uh, Kelsey and I, uh, Kelsey came down yesterday and uh, like we typically do, we'll go out on the, uh, uh, the patio and we'll just have a cigar and talk about business. So uh, one of the things was exactly what you're talking about. There is a company who is cleaning up. Now, I'm not going to mention even the type of product because I do talk about this company in very positive terms, but uh, in this case, uh, it's very negative. And they had two really great products, an expensive and a mid-range product. They were both doing extremely well, but the company decided that they were going to do a knockoff product um, so they could introduce it into the marketplace. They almost looked exactly the same, um, a little bit different packaging. And what ended up happening? And I said, don't do it. Why are you doing it? Put this, put these profitable items and keep it going. Keep the momentum going. We were zoned in, but he went and he knocked off these two. Now he spread it out and they weren't getting, well, first he went into an inventory issue during fourth quarter. He never got it back into, um, for almost two months. These other two were performing really poorly. And what did he do the next the next year? He doubled his, his uh, products, not focusing on the money makers. Now, the money makers have tanked. They're performing terribly. He's got these new products that the same a leopard doesn't change his spots. He, another one was doing extremely well. And what did he do? Didn't order enough, ran out of inventory, and now it's down the tank again. Two things, capitalization, knowing those costs, those unit costs that you were talking about and making sure it's clearly defined. And then what you're talking about here, kill, literally, get rid of the non-performers. It wouldn't even be a second, I wouldn't even think of it a second, like at a second glance, if something's really performing well and you can't do either increase the profit or maybe you're in the wrong category, maybe there's some other reason for it. But if you can't improve that, why are you dragging down your whole business? So, bingo. And 
you mentioned about the inventory. So maybe. Uh, oh, how about we get after that way. right now? It's at the bottom of the hour. This is flying by, by the way. So it's already past the the uh, bottom of the hour. And this is typically where we would uh, talk about the Wheel of Kelsey. So first of all, if you're listening, and I know it's a holiday today and a lot of people are probably uh, kicking up their feet, but if you're interested in an incredible giveaway today, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people, you'll get a second entry. And by the way, I don't know what, and I would put priceless on this um, to be able to have the CEO and founder of a an incredibly large com- feed visor. Uh, check it out if you haven't heard of them. I have heard so many great things, but you've got the CEO and founder that is willing to do a consultation. That doesn't happen. So anyway, uh, you want to get a bit more into that, Victor? Sure, sure. So uh, what we basically offer here for the winner is uh, a meeting with me and maybe some of the uh, team and the advisor, and we'll look into your business and and have a quick chat with you and see if we can uh, help you. Well, that's fantastic. So hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, you'll get a second entry. And we do have something, um, you're you're incredibly generous, but you did give a discount for everybody. Anybody who's interested, uh, you want to talk about that as well? Yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, we done a very special thing with with Norm, and basically, everyone who wants to uh, potentially engage and partner with us, and uh, you just mentioned that you came through this podcast, lunch with Norm, and we'll give you twenty percent discount. Uh, of the first, uh, I think, first six months, right? We said. Uh, of uh, I'm not sure. I'll leave that one up to Kelsey. Yeah, uh, I don't even remember how many months. <laughs> but, it's, uh, but we'll get a really, really good deal uh, for for some of these folks who really want to come and, and optimize. Because the the interesting thing, and this is. Um, this is excites me every time we're talking with, with a new client. Uh, when when you engage with a company like us, who really helps you to optimize, we are not a cost for you. It doesn't matter how thin my costs. And we're giving you 20% just for you to feel better. But what matters is what do we generate for you? What's the ROI? Are you going to be making more money going home? And if you do, we're probably a good partner. Very good. Okay. So hashtag Willa Kelsey, tag two people. Kelsey, Kelsey, if you're paying attention, hit a button. Are you struggling to keep up with your Amazon business? Do you need help from a skilled, reliable virtual assistant? Well, look no further than the Virtual Assistant Academy or VAA Philippines. Founded by successful Amazon sellers who know the challenges of hiring quality VAs, VAA specializes in locating, screening, training, and supporting high-quality VAs in the Philippines. Their VAs receive extensive Amazon training and ongoing professional development and are committed to a long-term working relationship with you. Partner with VAA and experience the peace of mind knowing that you have a dedicated Amazon-trained VA who's up to date with the latest tools and trends in the dynamic Amazon marketplace. Head over to VAAPhilippines.com and let VAA match you with your ideal VA today. There we go. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the low-level inventory. There you go. Let's do sharing for a second. Okay. I'll do another small visualization. So it's simple, isn't it, Norm? You you don't want to have too much inventory. You don't want to have too little. That's where the strategy comes. Strategy always simple. How you implement this, this is where we feed advisor come into play. We will watch the velocity. So it all comes to the velocity of inventory, velocity of sales, right? How many units you consistently sell every day? How many units do you have in total? What's your lead time to, to replenish? 
And then what you really want to have, you really want to have an environment where you don't sell too fast, you don't sell too slow, like a Goldilocks. Just perfect. So how you do that? You do that through pricing actions. So, so for example, if you, if you have too few of the inventory, maybe you want to gouge your price up. Maybe you can make more on any transaction. You're not suppressed. On the other hand, if you have too much, you want to advertise, you want to push, you want to sell. That's crucial because you're going to be hit with that long storage fee you mentioned before, which even worse. So like your operating margin is going to tank. This is a very important consideration. And this is how you define how then the algorithm should run and really do this optimization for you as, as you're watching that velocity. So, so that's very, very crucial. Now, the last thing I want to mention, it's not in, on this visualization. This visualization just shows you that you have an excess inventory products, you have products you need to replenish. You don't want to be out of stock. Like all these things, we help you to we visualize it for you. We show it to you on the screen. We help you to take actions. But there is one thing, one thing that is not here and it's exceptionally important. And this is where you tie these two things we spoke before and this one. So you have the inventory and you have the profitability. You obviously, in no way in the world, you cannot have not enough inventory for your best performing products. Like it's, it's a taboo. And, and it's so easy to say, but the fact is almost everyone does. Almost everyone does. And we, we see when we onboard new customers, even the very large customers, we set certain set of products that we set to optimize. And guess what? In After a week or two, we have half. What's the other half? Oh, I didn't think the inventory is out. I didn't think about the fact that I need to replenish. I didn't take into account the lead time. And we're talking about the multi-million dollar sellers. It's not even a small seller that just using it as, as, as a sort of a night job. This is, it's such a common mistake. And then on the other hand, you have these products that are poor performance and then people buy them and buy them and buy them and they build like massive inventories. And so like, what for, right? You're not making a lot of enough money of them. Add long storage fees, it's, you're going to be losing money. That's tying inventory together with your unit economics and your operational map when you look at the items on sales versus operating margin these two is really kind of one plus one solution you absolutely have to have this once you have this you're going to have business that is going to just by that you will double your profit just by that you will double your profit because you you kind of you're just not falling into every hole on the road you're just going straight. You're just watching where you're going. Just that is enough. Even before you start thinking, oh, how I said this keywords, that keywords. Oh, bullshit. Just focus on sell your good products. Don't run out of the inventory and make sure you don't overstock. And if you do overstock, increase the velocity. And this is where the algorithms come in. So I will pause here. Uh, I don't know, Norm, um, if you have further questions on this, but I think it's such an important concept. And it's really what separates winners from losers. Just noticed I was on mute, but um, yeah. And it's, it, it's making sure that the right money is being spared or is not being spared on the right services. I, I'll give you an example. So very large brand, very, very large brand um, just got comfortable and didn't do their $300 inspection. And all of a sudden, all these containers came over, $3 million worth of containers, and it was an inferior product. And all of it got rejected. Another one is that, uh, and this is where we learned our lesson. I'm talking about our family. Uh, we ended up buying factories over in Taiwan. Uh, but prior to this, um, we were going through some other companies to do these alcohol swipes. And these were for cleaning your, your electronics and um, cell phones and stuff like that. So we were using a broker and the broker said that he was doing an inspection 
the alcohol, and I'm talking containers of these alcohol swipes came in and he, and the company decided that they were going to save like a quarter penny on a different film that they put in on the alcohol swipe. And when the containers came in, they were deemed a hazard. All the alcohol had dripped through and nothing like we didn't have uh, a proper insurance and we didn't have a proper inspection. We learned very quickly, and this goes back to 15, 20 years, but man, this is where you don't sacrifice to make a profit because at the end of the day, it's going to hit you one way or the other. So I think that's pretty important just to make sure that you do keep it up. There's certain areas where you can, uh, like where we were talking about getting rid of some of the underperforming products, or, you know, you could find different ways to cut back. But on certain things, you just absolutely cannot. That's my spiel. Yeah, yeah. And I would say from here, uh, kind of this is where you get to the brand butter of what we do. Because we spoke a lot about the strategy. We spoke a lot about how you define optimization. And this is on purpose. Because at the end, we do our job. We can deliver bids for you. We can deliver uh, prices for you. That's not what our customers should care about. They should care about strategy. They should care what they want. So, so that's why I put so much emphasis today on really giving these strategic advices because regardless if you partner with us or not, it's something you, you can take home. Right. So, so maybe we can, we can talk in, in a few minutes about uh, how we actually translate this into, um, into the action. So if we, we show again the, the visualization, the first thing that we spoke about is how you generate more demand. And there is nothing here that is rocket science. You need to create the campaign. You need to set your strategies and objectives. You need to watch performance. You need to find keywords. You need to find bids. We do everything for you pretty much uh, as a part of the, of the AI and the consultative service that we provide. So we do everything for you. Uh, and the same applies uh, to, to basically pricing. Uh, where there are two ways of pricing, right? So one way of pricing is when you fight for the buy box and then we help you to win more of the buy box. You don't always need to lower the price to win the buy box. Very often you actually can raise the price and win the buy box, but you need to react faster to the competitor. So you want to raise price, you want to lower the price, you want to kind of trick the competition. Even you can trick the Amazon. Uh, and it's so interesting. We, we had a pilot uh, last month where we showed that we tricked Amazon to an extent that we increased the sales by 20%. For someone who was competing with Amazon, say like, oh, I thought this is the maximum I can ever get. This is Amazon, like, what can I do? Guess what? You, you can also trick Amazon. But if you're getting too greedy, Amazon will go all the way against you, and then you're going to end, end with an empty plate. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot of smartness logistics involved here. And But if you play it right, you can do exceptionally well in the buy box environment. And you, you also can do very well when you have no competition, when you own the buy box. Because then again, pricing is an important factor. But I would say here, the one lesson I learned, one lesson is everyone, without an exception, every uh, seller we speak with, large or small, they set the price and they always underprice always underpriced. And the reason they always underpriced, they're afraid if the price would be a bit higher, and sometimes they're right, if the price is a bit higher, it's going to kill the business. That's where you need the science, right? So sometimes you need a little bit higher. Sometimes you can't, but in many cases you can. And then you can slightly increase the price. It does marvels to the profit. Your overall profit can increase 10, 20%. And guess what? People buying exactly the same amount because they don't really care. And sometimes you can slightly raise the price and after a few months you can lower the price and then you can raise it again. What we have seen is the biggest problem with those private labels, smaller brands, those that are selling products where they own the buy books, they love leaving money on the table. They do it every day. I don't know why. <laughs> That's kind of a passion. They leave money on the table every day. They always underprice. And they're always afraid to kind of put the price up and sometimes rightfully so, but more often than not, they're just leaving money on the table. 
So, so this is so interesting. And then the other fact, you obviously can manage through pricing to take into account your inventory situations. We spoke about the velocities. Uh, you can take into account demand situation. You can tag against your competition. There's multiple things you can do on the pricing. And this is what our platform really enables people to do. But again, it all ties back to the same strategy we spoke about is you, you want to make sure that you sell most, your most profitable products. This is the one that you advertise. This is the one that you, you focus on pricing. Sometimes you can do very, very smart things, which people think are impossible. They think it's, it's in an outer world. It doesn't happen in, on this earth. And this is where you advertise and you get way more traffic. And then you say, oh, there's so much cost. And guess what? Sometimes at the same time as you advertise, you can slightly raise the price. And sometimes it wouldn't have any impact on your conversion rate. And in this case, you're basically returning, you're kind of recycling some of the costs. Margin don't suffer that much. And then again, you're ending up with doing more. And this is incredible. The amount of ROI being left on the table is incredible. That's what drives our business. That's why we were so happy to be partnering with, with customers because it's, uh, it's, it's not that people are not smart. It's very hard for human. It's much easier for the machine. So you spoke about the AI. This is where it all comes into play. Yeah, and I, I agree so much with so many, and I'd probably say the majority haven't priced their product properly. Like we, uh, we, I remember uh, doing something for a toe fungus company and they would not go over ten dollars and they weren't selling anything and then we rebranded and we brought it out at 24.99 and it killed it um you know within the first few months we we saw sales it, it went up as high as one hundred twenty four thousand dollars, and that difference in price killed it and also i talk about this one a lot but there was a knife company that came out at 49 we rechanged the packaging, made it look better, higher perceived value, and got it for 97 to uh, 124. They're leaving a ton of money at $49. And it, I mean, we're talking, these are, I don't even know if it's the exception to the rule. Um, it just depends on how you come out and what your perceived value looks like. Absolutely. If you do it right, you could double it. Now there's certain things like I have soap. I'll get, and this is a great example, by the way, I was just going to say, Oh, you can't do it. But I went to Lebo the other day and one bar of soap they're selling for 60 bucks, 60. And I thought, wow, this is must be pretty good. Soap it's probably no different than the soap I make, you know, and I'm selling it for 10 and I'm pushing it because other people are selling uh, cold processed soap for anywhere from three ninety nine to seven ninety nine, and I've got to compete with those people. But you know, it's all about perception. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, so we don't have a lot of time, and uh, I have one last topic I, I want to sure. talk about, and I'll try to do it fast, and then we'll leave time to to chat more. So, and this last topic is where we actually started. So, how you? bring it all together, how you optimize holistically, right? Uh, and for that, I need to show you one last set of visualizations, but uh, I wouldn't bother anymore. And this is uh, for those of you who, who don't see the screen. This is the cycle, uh, which is probably the, the way that you should think about optimization in this cycle. You define the strategy and we spoke about how you define the strategy and uh, how you choose your different items. And then based on the profit, based on the sales, you add the inventory situation, right? So we spoke about this as well. You, you take the, the inventories and then you understand where you need to move faster, where you need to move slower. That's great. Then you move into the actions. This is where the AI gets into play. Uh, this is where Feedvisor shines basically because we help you to define the strategy. Now we execute it for you. This is where you said the advertising, that's your demand generation strategy. Then there's pricing come into play. And then you come to kind of the last piece is, okay, it was great. You know, you get into the bottle, you're going out. Now you need to count how many you lost, how many you won. 
And, and this is where the last piece that we really invested into Feedvisor and what's really made us a uh, superior player today is the fact that we help you to really analyze what's going on. And, and this analysis comes in uh, multiple ways. So, so first of all, analyze you against the competition, right? So if you uh, doing, if you're going against buy books, how much actually are you getting, how much others are getting, what's the amount of money you leave on the table, what's the amount of money you can recapture, super, super important. And then the next one is like, okay, so great. Uh, I saw competition. What's how my performance looks like? And this is the actual screenshot from from our product, but as well, as well as the previous ones. But this is how my performance works, and where I'm doing better, where I'm doing uh, worse. And uh, and again, you you can see kind of the graph and the trends. And the, and the last one is okay. So so let's see it on the individual skew. Let's see the actual impact. And then when you combine all of these. Together, that's actually the last visualization. We don't need it anymore, uh, so you can take it off. But it's um, it's really um, it it's really comes down to you have this one holistic process of the optimization. It's holistic because you need to look at the entire business. You need to look at the strategy. You need to look at the inventory. You cannot just do one thing of optimization. You cannot just be doing advertising. It's not enough you have to have the pricing arm because you will be leaving a lot of money on the table. It will be just, it's just jumping on one leg, right? This is, there is a reason we have two. So uh, the very same thing with pricing. You, you can partner with some pricing provider, but you don't have the other part. You don't have the advertising. You don't look what happens when you own the buy book. So again, you, you can't think about this narrow. You have to think about this holistically. So you're doing this holistic optimization. You do pricing, you do advertising, you connect it to the strategy and you analyze. And then you're closing the cycle. You analyze, you see what needed, where situation is now, which my most profitable products today, which the inventory situation, what I need to adjust. And then you repeat, repeat, repeat. And at every cycle, you take your business one level up. And this is how you grow, even today in this crazy world of inflation and liquidity issues and what's not and kind of limited demand even today the best sellers they're growing i see it every day there are some that don't but i see those that manage to win every day even today so you just need to approach it right yeah and that's all great insight you know that you've provided if um if anybody's interested in contacting the company um where should they or where should they go to contact you so so the best thing is simply go to, to feedvisor and uh, reach out and uh, ask for a demo and uh, we will be more than happy to, to connect with you so go to our website ask for a demo or um ask for more information and we'll be there perfect okay so last chance uh marcia this is a great uh, this is a really good odds for you today, but anybody interested in this incredible uh, consultation with Victor and his team, uh, get that hash. Oh, we got competition now. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag wheel of Kelsey and whoever wins this, you are lucky. So this is something special that they put together for us. And, you know, Spencer and his team spend some time with you going over your account. Okay, so that's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. We're cutting it off right after this commercial. I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors to help keep this podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Jeff Schick Law, Rebate.com, Honu Worldwide, Digital Blacksmiths, Netfluence, Extreme Power and Startup Club. Now back to the show. Okay, so I see that Marcia just said something about Tony and his big news. I just posted, tell me more, please. So anyway, uh, let's head over to the Wheel of Kelsey today. Just a couple of entries. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, so 
hope everyone's enjoying their Easter uh, weekend. Uh, so let me see. We're going to shuffle these up. Marshall's I was almost going to suggest that we do it as a giveaway because we know so many people are listening uh, or uh, celebrating uh, Good Friday today. But this is really good odds. <laughs> All right. So if you are the winner, please email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll get your There prize. you go, Marsha. And Marsha's the big winner. Yes. So now congratulations. Um, there is the 20% off uh, for the first two months with Feedvisor. Just mentioned Lunch with Norm, and you'll be set up too. So uh, everyone's a winner today. Okay. So, Victor, uh, we're going to remove you. Just go back in the waiting room. I'll be there in a second as we wind this up. But I just wanted to really thank you for coming on and explaining everything that you talked about today. Uh, you're one of the most uh, knowledgeable guys in the business and just really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.